I'll make a number of points, actually. I've been very clear in my remarks about the level of injustice that is felt across the country, and that's been illustrated in what we've seen over the weekend and the very peaceful protests that have taken place. But I'm really saddened that the Honourable Lady has effectively said that this government doesn't understand um, racial inequality. Well, on that basis, Madam Deputy Speaker, it must have been a very different Home Secretary who, as a child, was frequently called a packy in the playground. A very different Home Secretary who was racially abused in the streets or even advised to drop her surname and use her husband's in order to advance her career. A different Home Secretary recently characterised, if Madam Deputy Speaker I can say so, in the Guardian newspaper as a fat cow with a ring through its nose, something that was not only racist but offensive, both culturally and religiously. This is hardly an example of respect, equality, tolerance or fairness. So when it comes to racism, sexism, tolerance or social justice, I will not take lectures from the other side of the House. I have already said repeatedly there is no place for racism in our country or in society. And sadly, too many people are too willing, too casually, to dismiss the contributions of those who don't necessarily conform to preconceived views or ideas about how ethnic minorities should behave or think. This, Madam Deputy Speaker, in my view, is racist in itself. And as I said earlier on, both in my statement and in my answers to other colleagues in the House, to combat the real inequalities in society and to end the gross disservice to many communities, many communities, Madam Deputy Speaker, across our nation who are subject to real and pressing inequalities, we must address these issues. These are sensitive issues in an accurate and a responsible way. By addressing prejudice, rather than inciting and inflaming tensions. Yeah.